Welcome to Desert Island Tims. My castaway this week is a man who is known for his social networking sites that expose the corruption and hypocrisy in Scottish football and media. Morrissey the 23rd, how are you sir? I'm very well, thanks very much. Very honoured to be on the show. Delighted. It's a pleasure to have you here. Right, uh, what was life like for you growing up in West Lothian? I had a great life growing up in West Lothian. I lived in a small mining town. I lived near farms and I enjoyed messing around on the farms. I lived near a country park. I enjoyed messing around in the country park and the nature. I had a good set of friends. We did all the types of things that kids do basically, playing football, playing playing games. Uh, I was the I was the youngest of four, so I was I was a little bit spoiled. My mother and father both worked hard and had good jobs, so I was always I was always allowed to get pretty much what I want. I wasn't totally spoiled, but I, I, I was a little bit spoiled. Um, I, I had a pretty fun time when I was a kid. From an early age, I was interested in animals, and I decided at a very very early age that I wanted to study agriculture against my parents' better wishes. So when I was when I was sixteen, I done two years YTS youth training scheme, working on a farm. And I then went and studied farm management at Oak Ridge Agricultural College and East of Scotland College of Agriculture in Edinburgh. Your first song? My first song's by John Lennon. As I said earlier, I had older brothers. One was five years older, one ten years older. So I was influenced by their music quite a lot, educated with their music growing up. They'd, I'd listened to things like Pink Floyd... Uh, the Beatles, The Stranglers, Joy Division uh, and one of the bands that they introduced me to was John Lennon my, f- my, my our father in my life if you like is uh, Imagine but this is the double A side which you, uh, younger listeners won't be familiar with uh, bo- two sides of a record and the, usually it was an A and a B this, this was a double, double A side it's a uh, working class hero this 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 is a song that John Lennon wrote to as a warning against falling f- into the machinery of capitalism. It would, you would rather be you'd rather be a peasant than killed to get to the top. Uh, he's seen how religion is used to control people and how the the media are used to control people, tying in with 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 the football thing, the mainstream media. Obviously, they don't print print the news as it's hap- as it happens. Uh, it's old news that you, you're getting. So my first song is "Working Class Hero" by John Lennon. That was "Working Class Hero" by John Lennon. What took you into your social networking exploits? I think what happened is I sort of stumbled across it. I had been living in Chile for a sh- for some time, and I decided to follow Morrissey once again on tour, and I ended up splitting up with my Chilean girlfriend because I was following Morrissey around, and I ended up staying at my mother's house, and I, I, and my mother gave me a laptop. So when I got a laptop and I got onto the internet, you look at the things that you normally look at for me music being a big one and Celtic being a big one I stumbled across Phil McGillibin's blogs and I always knew that we were being cheated and I, I finally there was someone there with a voice standing up saying no this is what's happening we need, to, we need to fight this so I wanted to spread the word regarding that I wanted to look in to see what he, what he was saying was it true and then the more I did that, the more I realised there was actually other people saying things too. Mm. And uh, I found a, a, a Facebook page called No SPL for a Liquidated Rangers. I thought it was really important that Rangers were going to be, be liquidated, that the writing was on the cards, and it was obvious that Scottish football authorities were c- corrupt and that they were going to let in the new Rangers back in straight into the top so I I wanted to do everything that I could possibly to stop that 
and I joined this Facebook group and I began posting lots of stuff to do with Celtic. It, it was a it was a group that was aimed for Celtic fans. However, I thought it was crucially important that the group was open to supporters of all clubs because it was all the clubs that were getting screwed and I then started sending messages out via via Facebook looking up like Partick Thistle or Aberdeen and then looking up different different groups and sending them messages and asking them to join and asking them to take part. Once we've got a broad selection of supporters I realised that we needed to take action because it was no point just tapping away at our keyboards and being all angry amongst each other so we did look at things we could do. We wrote to our clubs and we told them we weren't happy. I wrote to Celtic and I told Celtic that I wasn't happy that, that if I felt that Celtic were involved in this then the old firm existed and I didn't want to be part of the old firm because that's not what I imagined mm. I, I know that if the shoe had been on another foot Alan McCoy would have taken great joy from watching Celtic's demise that they would have stood in their windpipe mm -hmm. they would have they would have put Celtic out of the game if possible so why, why were Celtic not doing everything they could to put Rangers out of the game and a lot of people who are probably wiser than me said that, told me that the reason that, that Celtic weren't coming out and making statements and, and being, being seen to do anything was that they would be attacked for it and, and there would be probably even people getting killed in the street, there would be chapels getting burnt, um, they, they would be getting taken up to disciplinary committees for speaking out it would be backfiring on Celtic and, and, and the media and the Scottish football authorities would, would be using Celtic as as a, a diversion tool away from what the real problem was which was the corruption and cheating in football and the non-tax paying of, uh, at Rangers after the clubs stood up against Rangers being allowed into the SPL and the new co were allowed to be fast tracked into the bottom division ahead of decent teams like Spartans. I stopped. I stopped listening to the Radio Clyde to Radio Scotland. There was no point in listening to that media because their agenda was to feed you lies. And I realised that there was lots of internet bampots out there, and you didn't need to be any special kind of guy to do some bampottery on the internet. Everybody can do it at their own level, whether that's writing to the Advertising Standards Agency or doing the kind of thing that I'm doing, which is sourcing different internet bampots, sourcing different information, copying and pasting the links, and putting them in one place for it to be easy to read. People from America and Australia, Celtic fans, would send me messages saying, "I can just go onto your page and I can. I've got ten minutes during my lunch and I can read through and get the most important things." So basically, I ended up not planning to, but I ended up editing a page of Celtic news on Facebook. Your second song. My second song is "No Surrender." This is a song that I've enjoyed singing out loud many times at Hamden. Uh, <laughs> I was I was introduced to this band when I was about 14 uh, in Salcoats once on the holiday with my, my mother and father and my brother five years older than me. He introduced me to Trivial Pursuit, to The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole and he introduced me to Bruce Springsteen. I think Bruce Springsteen is one of the most romantic singers there is and one of the best live performers there is. Uh, this is uh, No Surrender by Bruce Springsteen. That was Bruce Springsteen. Who are your influences and heroes? My influences come from my family mainly. My mother and my father. Fathers introduced me to all kinds of things like science, astrology. He's a very interesting man. Um, my brothers have introduced me to all kinds of music, to different kind of books, different kind of movies, and I'd say that the characters in those movies and those books are they're my friends and my and, and my heroes. Uh, there is one person who, above everyone else, I would say is a hero. Apart from him, I would say uh, n there's no more heroes. But m one hero I've definitely got 
and I could talk to you about him for hours if you want, is Morrissey. Morrissey's influenced me a great deal. I first discovered Morrissey in the last months when I was at school. I was coming home from school one day and some people on the bus knew I knew quite a lot about music and they said to me, is there a, a band got an album called The Queen Is Dead? I didn't want to tell these people that I didn't know there, if there was a band that had a song called The Queen Is Dead. So I got off the bus and I went to the local chemist where we used to buy records and I seen this cover, The Smiths, great name, The Queen Is Dead, great cover, opened it up, gatefold sleeve, picture of the band, like a little gang, great photograph, started reading the lyrics and before I even heard the music I knew I was going to become obsessed with this band. I then started buying all their back catalogue and I've listened to The Smiths Morrissey every day since I was maybe 15, something like that. I'm 42 now. I never got to see the Smiths live. Because I never got to see the Smiths live, I follow Morrissey around on tour uh, a lot. And he's one of the few people that I've met in life that hasn't actually let me down. Excellent. This takes you into your third choice. Okay, the third song is a song by Morrissey. It's not a very well-known song. It's a, a B-side. It was originally... Its working title was called Belfast. It was, it was written around about the time when the Troubles were supposedly ending. And the name's been changed to a title from the movie Romper Stomper. It's about a Catholic being brought up in, in Northern Ireland... That, the song is This Is Not Your Country That was This Is Not Your Country by Morrissey What are your earliest memories of going to Celtic Park? Earliest memories of going to Celtic Park are probably uh, when my brother who's five years older than me was at university or uh, Paisley College of Technology it was at the time he took me to first of all I went to Love Street I seen Celtic play at Love Street I think two weeks later I saw Celtic play Aberdeen um, when, when, before we went to the stadium my brother told me all about the jungle and I, I knew what I, I knew I was actually going to, I knew about the jungle and I, this time I was actually going to go to the jungle uh, he told me that they stand at the same place all the time and there's a guy stands near them that blames Davy Proven for absolute everything so we, this day we turn up and Davy Proven's not playing uh, near the end of the game Celtic are getting beat and this guy blames Davy Proven for <laughs> not playing uh, <laughs> Davy Proven get, get brought on as a substitute and scored from a, a free kick and uh, that's one of my earliest memories uh, That I wasn't allowed to go to football when I was younger m my, my father didn't think you should support Celtic or Rangers well, he, he's seen that as um, you could be doing better things with your life once I got a little bit of taste of going to the football and I could do it, I used to get what we called the service bus in the public bus into Glasgow and it took a long time to get there and we'd, we'd go through to the games and this was around about the time when casuals were, were, were starting uh, and I remember one game we were coming back and it was a rush to get on the bus because the bus was full and then you'd have to wait half an hour to get the next one and the bus stops and the bus driver says one person only one person who came from the same town as me got on and I jumped, I jumped right at the front of the queue and the bus driver managed to let the two of us on we get to the next bus stop and my friends who were hoping that the bus wouldn't stop at the cross because it often didn't they were waiting at the next bus stop were waving to me and I was waving back to them very pleasantly like this is great, this is funny I'm on the bus and they're not but I didn't realise that they were being introduced to casuals and they were getting their heads kicked in <laughs> so n n none, of, none, of, none of that group of friends that I, that I went to football with then ever went back but I continued to go and it, it was it's like a, an addiction you keep going all the time Your fourth song The Sash My Father Wore by Ball Boy. My fourth song is uh, about a bigot. It could actually be about any bigot. Uh, I think everyone should be against every kind of ism there is, whether it's racism, sectarianism, maybe apart from criticism. I thought of picking lots of different Scottish bands, uh, Frightened Rabbit, Homeward James, 
Bell and Sebastian I think there's a lot of good Scottish bands and I decided to pick one so this is the one I've picked and it's they've got lots of good songs but this one I think for the people listening to the show that don't actually enjoy my taste in music they might have a little bit of laugh at this one this is uh, The Sash My Father Wore by Ball Boy What irritates you? Apathy Did he explain it? I can't be bothered <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Uh, the apathy in all f- all areas of life, whether it's to do with people who don't care regarding what's happening polit- politically, or people just don't care about the environment they live in and throwing their rubbish in the street. Apathy regarding letting Rangers get away with total corruption, continuing to buy media that are telling you lies. Uh, absolutely. Everything actually irritates me, and the the older that I get, the more I'm irritated by things, which irritates me. But <laughs> we'll pick apathy. <laughs> uh, one of the things concerning apathy in Scottish football that annoys me is it seems that people continue to go along and pay for the football, whether it's a fair and equal competition or not. They're just happy for it to be entertainment. People should be saying, no, I'm not going to accept that. I'm not going to have the corruption that's going on. I'm not having the same people who are corrupt still running the game. They should do something about it, whether that's writing to the SFA. Maybe the SFA don't care. Writing to UEFA. Maybe the UEFA don't care. But the, the people need to do something, whether it's writing to their, their MPs, whether it's signing a resolution for the forthcoming Celtic AGM people people can d- decide to do all sorts of things they can decide to w- withdraw their money w- withdraw going to the game I'm, I would, I'm not a person who would support you supporting your team by withdrawing money that seems a bit crazy to me but, so you, but you need to get y- your team to do w- what you can to stop the corruption your fifth song my fifth song is called The Five Way Agreement no, it's called A Pack of Lies by Fatima Mansions. Uh, this is a, a song regarding a immigrant and how when the immigrant is taken away from his place of birth and put in, in a different land, how he becomes a different kind of person and uh, to some level or another a different kind of brute. It's Fatima Mansions, A Pack of Lies. That was Pack of Lies by Fatima Mansions. How do you relax? I don't relax. I'm always on. I find it really difficult to get to sleep. Perhaps in the past, I relax by uh, using herbs, but uh, I don't do that these days very often. Uh, Occasionally, I'll I'll, uh, have a drink, but that's not a healthy way to relax every single night. Uh, I used to read and listen to music, but for some reason, to, to be honest, I'm I'm just on all the time now, and I, 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 I just collapse. One of the things I like to do that I find relaxing is I like to travel. I like to go to places I've never been. I like to see things I've never seen. I like to taste things that I've never seen. But I'm not a very relaxed person. You're six song my sixth song I decided to pick a, a, a song from a band I like a lot which is The Cure this song that I've picked is about the sickness of lust if I could ask the listener just to listen to the guitar and let themselves get lost in the music it's called Kiss Me Kiss Me Kiss Me what are your plans for the future my plans for the future is hope, hopefully to get married to my girlfriend Perhaps if I'm lucky, live in some warm island. I don't know. Is this is this a, a Scottish island or is this a, a desert island? It's nice and sunny. I don't know. My future is is to focus on my girlfriend and me. Hopefully, the, the two of us. Hopefully, the two of us can get a job. And the more recent future, what's coming is I'm going to be doing a skydive for Stellan Petrov for the, the, uh, families who have leukemia to help support them uh, under the umbrella of the Celtic charity I'm going to be doing that on the 25th of this month and if I could also ask you to put a link on your webpage 
if anyone would like to donate to that, thanks very much. Your penultimate song? I'd like to dedicate this song to my girlfriend Saba. This is a band I was introduced to by my best friend, whom I've spoke to perhaps once in the last five years and about six times in the last 15 years. I, I don't do communication very well. This song is Nick Cave, Into My Arms. Right, we've come to the part of the programme where I give you the complete works of the dandy and a copy of the Bible to take with you to your island. Would you like a copy of the Bible? Of course, it's got better characters in it than the dandy, Banana Man, Corky the Cat. I haven't got a patch on the characters on the on the Bible, and I'm sure I could find a lot more uses for the Bible than I, I would a dandy. So yeah, I'll have a, a Bible. Thanks very much. Good. Which other book would you take, and why? I would take The Wonders of the Universe by Brian Cox, so that I could perhaps actually understand it and realise what tiny little part I play in the massive universe what little insignificance I am and how amazing everything is how we came from stardust and we're going to go back to being stardust a luxury something to make your life a bit more bearable and remember it can't be a telephone and it can't be another human being okay my luxury would be a king size luxury double bed because I, I've slept rough before and I know what it's like and I don't imagine there's a bed on the island so I'll I'll have one of the greatest inventions man's ever made I'll have a double bed Fantastic Your final song My final song's by another band that I've followed for a long time and love a lot the band's called The Wedding Present. I discovered them when I was, I think I was 17. One of my brothers was home for Christmas and he asked me to record John Peel's Festive 50, which I'd never heard of before. That programme opened a whole world of music to me. That night, it introduced me to The Wedding Present. I liked the idea, the name, of the, name the Wedding Present. They had songs like Everyone Thinks He Looks Daft, which I thought were great titles. I followed this band around a lot also. I think this is a, a good song to introduce people to the wedding present. It's about greed in the media and how it's important to look after the special people in your life. The song's called Kennedy. Morrissey the 23rd, thank you very much for being a Desert Island Tim. Oh, I should ask you something back. Hey, thanks. <laughs> I'm thinking. I, I should, I'm thinking. I shouldn't be fucking interrupting you. Right. Okay. Morris, <laughs> Morris, the 23rd. Trouble. <laughs> Thank you very much for being a desert island, Tim. It's been a pleasure and a privilege. <laughs>